Hello, welcome everybody um, to Canva New Zealand and Australia, basically Auckland, uh, not Auckland, um, Melbourne and Sydney, sorry. Um, and that's Dan who's here with me. Um, he's got the um, Australian um, meetup groups. We've got Aurelien here today. I'll say a few words um, after this. And um, yeah, I think Dan has an important announcement to do before we get started. Yeah, so uh, folks, uh, if you haven't already heard, Kanban Australia is on again this year in Sydney um, on the 18th of October. That's a Friday. Um, <clears throat> so if you haven't got your tickets yet, there is still a super early bird special on right now where you can get 25% off. So that's a special Kanban conference there. Um, and I'll put a link in the chat for that. The other thing is we've also opened it uh, for proposals. So if you want to do a Kanban talk, you've got a case study or anything like that, uh, you know, you want to make a submission, uh, please do that. I put the uh, direct link in for the submissions there as well. If you wanted to come to Sydney and, and give a talk and be part of Kanban Australia this year. So thank you very much, Silka. No worries. And um, New Zealand people, Kiwis, that's also a call to you. You are welcome to Australia as well. <laughs> um, Cool. So um, if you are new here, if you are keen to see previous recordings, we've had a really cool few recordings over the last four and a half years and have grown quite a lot since. Um, there is the Canva New Zealand YouTube channel. You can just Google it um, and you, feel, you, you find heaps of cool stuff over there. I'll put the link in the chat um, when I stop talking. Um, and other than that, we've got Aurelia here today for the Trojan War and Kanban. Very interesting talk. Um, we, some of us already had the, the pleasure to, um, to hear a version of it during the conference last year in Melbourne, but there are some improvements now. So it's even better for you guys here now. It will be very interactive. We use Menti a little bit. Um, keep your Q&A to the end but you will have a chance to reflect and be interactive as we go because it's built in the talk. Um, Aurelien is a Kanban and Agile person in Melbourne. Um, and I would say Aurelien, over to you. And if you like to talk a bit more about what you're doing, Magic Agile, whatever, feel free to do so. Sure, thank you so much, Silke. Thanks, Dan, for having me today. Uh, Trojan War and Kanban, I talk because I'm a big uh, mythology and chain story nerd. Uh, I'm also a big nerd on agile and lean and everything. And sometimes my brain collides ideas together. Um, at Magic Agile, we do training, coaching, consulting on everything agile from team adoption, a team performance improvement to transformation um, and helping scale the practices. Myself, I've been in the industry for over 15 years now. So I'm really happy to share um, this content with you today. So now just to get it off the, off the road already, uh, if you want to request a slide, you can just scan this. I'm going to send you, there's a pack, there's even a few more, some content we skipped today are all included. Just give me your email, everything else is optional, uh, and you will have it in your email box potentially tomorrow. So the agenda for today, I crafted three metaphors that represent to me three different teams context I've observed um, at work and in, in different uh, various uh, clients' environment. And for which of them I associate some practices to help improve the flow of value delivery, right? I will also cover two very important perspectives. One, a, a lean perspective to take upon our daily work, and the other one, an agile perspective to take upon how we get things done. So how I, I place the team context landscape, as I like to call it, to me, there is two extremes in the spectrum. On one side, you have the service VU team, ticket-driven, um, highly skilled, low uncertainty. There is requests coming up to us about anybody in the team can answer them, and we pass the board around and just getting it done, right? So these are teams that often are using Kanban, for instance, right? Or call center, our services. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got the product team, and they deal with the opposite. A lot of uncertainty. We don't really know what we're building or how it's going to be built. Um, and they're often cross-functional teams, right? It's not all the same expert. Not everybody can respond to anything that emerge um, in terms of work. Uh, they're often driven by a backlog of work, a roadmap. They've got something planned in the future. 
And so that's the two extreme of our spectrum. And obviously in the middle, there is every other teams. And if you are not too close to any end of that, I'm gonna call you a hybrid team today, and if you feel like it. And to try and maintain, just to get to know a bit who is with us today, let's try and place ourselves, um, try to figure out where our team stays on, on this scale. So I'm gonna start Menti. Here, you can join, please scan the QR code, go to menti.com, use the code that is shown here, 84961020. And you will be invited to place a pin here on this triangle. So just to try and understand, do we have many service teams today, many product teams? Is it more every other teams? I'll give you a minute to do that. Yep, so spot on hybrid. Okay. Right, fairly balanced. Well, well, in the middle. Right, it's start coming up now. In the middle, I will still almost call you a, a hybrid tier, team still. A little bit more product, a little more service. Still in the fridge of the yellow, right? Okay, I see a super product team today. Okay, about 10 participants, that's half of us. This is still open, so it can take time to answer that, but it seems like we've got a few hybrid team and that's really what um, I'm looking for today. You will have tips, even if you're a service or product team, no worries, we're covering the whole spectrum. Okay, I'd like to start with the Spartans, uh, because that's where people are, get the, the most excited most often. So why did I pick the Spartans as a metaphor for the service or the AE teams? I believe that the Spartan um, behaved at the time, especially when, when they were fighting in a very similar way. People sharing very similar skills, acting in the same way, repeating the same actions and supporting each other side by side, right? But very little diversity in the work fighting for instance. And this was quite illustrated in the uh, Hopit Phalanx at the time, which was the basic way to fight for people. This image is from Zack Snyder, 27 uh, movie, 300. A few of you may watch it again after this talk. Um, and also the flow of work for, for these guys was very similar to, you know, this, if I visualize it this way, Kanban board days, people approaching, uh, we are fighting them, and then we are done, especially for the Spartan, they were defeating so many people. They were quite like just getting things done at the time. Now, at some point, um, there is, for the second uh, Persian invasion of Greece, uh, Xerxes takes the whole of Perth, the whole of Persia and invade Greece. So it's it's almost an infinite army. And the Spartans are very good, right? In the movie, they are they were a little bit more than 300 at the time. Um, but they are quite unnumbered. And now the phalanx works very well as long as it's not outflanked. Right? So by just sending the whole of Persia, they is just assuring his own victory. Now the Spartans, they had a very lean perspective at the time, I believe, because they considered Rather than trying to grow skill overnight, invasion is upon us, we don't have time to develop new people, to unborn new people, to do all of that. However, what we can try and influence in that short time is um, our environment. We can try and influence the systems. I find it very smart because they actually um, found this Thermopylae, it's the hot gates that they're defined, which is a narrow corridor. And this is the point the Persian army had to go through, go across, otherwise they will have to take too, too long. Uh, going around it. And they said, if we wait for them, then we have a chance because their number doesn't matter anymore. And so this is well described in the movie, but basically the, the strategy worked. Right? For three days, they had very limited casualties, as you can see here, and wave after wave, the Persian was sending, they were just victorious. And we believe to this day that they could have sent that ground for almost ever and maybe defeated the whole of the army, no matter the number. And what I see here is like they limited their work in progress. But that's what they did. They implemented a pool system, and no matter the number of requests, right, they are able to respond to them in due time. Now, how does that, how does that look like for um, a, a real team, a real team working here? So um, you come onto the, the working floor, you can see this, this board, you can see that people are busy working, but some of the tasks are unattended. A whip limit, which is often working well in a ratio from one task, one task for one person. Some teams may do differently, but our firm works well this way. You'll say, all right, let's set the whip limit. So you'll say there's two people building things, there's two people analyzing things, let's stick to that. 
put everything back into the to-do backlog and focus on that. Similar to what the Spartan do, did. And then naturally, the pool system starts happening. When someone in building is done, they move their ticket to done. Right? And they have spare capacity. Now they can they may go and help the people in analyzing, they may go and help the other person in building until something is done in analyzing, ready to be pulled. And this is really where we have enacted here a pool system. And that's marvelous. That's what the Spartan did. Right? Limiting the whip is the way to uh, enact the pool system. And no matter the amount of request, they're generally about to handle that pretty well. Now, the Spartan, if you know the story, um, had overlooked one thing, the goat path. They had a goat path in the mountains, enabling, um, potentially enabling the Persian to um, overcome their defense and attack from the back of their line. Now, they got betrayed. The Persian heard about that goat path, and they sent their, their troops through that. Now, what happened there? They lost the war after three days because of that. And that relates still to me to a service team. You know, when we have like, we have our flow, it's all working very well, but I really need you to get that done. And then we start being uh, shortcutted with requests in our way. So this is where it's important to, have the, to make the policies explicit. It looks like that. You have your team. There is an opportunity. That's a good path here. The expedite lane is our good path. There is an opportunity for stakeholders or a critical demand to be taken to go past our pool system, past our weight limit, and be taken care uh, taken care for immediately. Now, if the Persian had sent only four guys, the, the Spartan will have one, right? But often what we see happen is that if the gold pass is, is um, overflown, then it starves our, our, our flow, it destroys everything, and the balance we had found doesn't work anymore. Right, so handling the expedite, expedite lane through explicit policies, first establishing them, but then making them clear and aligning everyone, including the people I built to pressure us, is very important here. I'm going to share the slides so you don't have to uh, read all of that for now. The key idea for the Spartans here I wanted to share with you is like either dealing with an overwhelming amount or critical request, do not let your flow be disrupted. Because this is how you'll be able to stay on your ground. Okay, and I'm really curious. I've shared with you this bit about the Spartan. For the few of you who resonated with the service team, how does that sound? And for everybody else, because I believe that can work for many teams. Peter, you're busy in doing court. What? Get out. Hey. Children fighting over my, my story. That's okay. Um, I believe it can work for any team, service team, product team, and especially hybrid team in the middle. Do you feel your flow being disrupted? So if you join me on Mentimeter, you'll be invited to tell me about the four things I shared with you. How do you think it's applicable in your own context? Right? Improve the system it's, instead of trying to fix people, limiting the work in progress to establish full system, establish policies and make them explicit, and don't let the flow be disrupted. How do you think it's, how, how real is it for you? Right? I'll give you a couple of minutes to answer this. Well, I like this. <laughs> um, and you will see on the next slide, I invite you to share your, your thought. I'm going to send you in very cartoon now. Um, so you can discuss all of that. I'm creating the room. It's going to be about four of you. I'd like to spend maybe five minutes, just, just a quick discussion between you. What do you think about this, this allegory of the Spartan metaphor here applied to your your context applied to service. I'll let you vote. As you discuss, please input the key elements of your conversation in the Mentimeter. We'll be able to go through them uh, at the end of the, of the, of the, of the talk here. Um, so capture as many as you can. Opening the room. If you haven't already, you should have a pop-up in Zoom inviting you to join a breakout room. Now you'll be able to see up here uh, the conversation and the insights. Sure. I'm going to start a timer. 
pull them back in five minutes. Lots of people haven't joined yet. Um, some people prefer to take a back seat and not generally join. Yeah, I think some that's the We are duplicated. Well, folks, if you are hearing this and if you want to hang out here, <laughs> feel free to hang out with us. Dan, uh, I mean, Dan Rando, um, really nice to see you too, by the way. Yep, my city is perfectly uh, perfectly fine. No problem. Yeah, he's in the chat, so maybe he can't talk. Yeah, juggling real life, he says. No <laughs> problem. At all. Yeah. So as I discuss here, you should see up here. Um, insights of the conversation we are having. Generally, the first run is a bit slow and for people to get accustomed to the, to the talk. The meeting went, yes, Dan, excellent. Hmm. All the sounds, your, your limit is in one. Mm, it sounds like he's got, um, he should limit the, at the moment um, in his real life, <laughs> where he's at at this, in this moment. And it's not always possible, is it? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> We do not see key elements of the conversation. Sometimes they like to just run them up uh, at the end. I'm back in the sick as well. No problem. About one more minute. How about you, Dan? Inspired to be a Spartan? Sorry, mate. Are you inspired to be a Spartan at work? Yeah, I actually haven't watched that movie, so um, it's been a while since I studied that history. So it's 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 nice to actually go through it all again. That's for sure. I often have people pinging me after saying, oh, "I actually watched the movie." So I'm happy I tried to find like okay movies about um, ancient history. They often a bit bad. Not that those are not, but well, oh. okay, I'm gonna it's good. I should be all back in about 10 seconds. Yeah. Your question if Dan likes to be Spartan gives that image into my brain that we should do like a role play in the next conference. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so, we invited in Menti, Sven Menti Medo, you can capture try and Share with us the key insight, what you discuss, how applicable it is, how, how applicable it is not. Uh, let us know in your context what may or may not uh, support the approach I shared. If you have any questions, let's park them for the end. I'm trying to roll through the contents so then we have a good 15 minutes to cover them. So now going back to, that was a Spartan. Now the next metaphor I, I use for the product team is Athenians. So I feel Athenians resonate quite well with that context. First of all, they were trying to invent democracy, and democracy was something really new at the time. It was a kind of a new technology emerging. Um, 
when they created the assembly, they had no idea how the final state of things would work, right? And then they have a, a roadmap. I like to imagine them working this way. Not that it points at any process you may be familiar with, but I like to think that they had a kind of a backlog of stuff they wanted to discuss in the assembly, right? So they will pick the next, um, they, they will select the next item and then they, they, they uh, debate it for a while, right? Changing a router, trying to respond and, and iterate around, um, trying to convince the audience. Then at the end, they will cast a vote that will either uh, promote or discard um, the selected item. No, and then they just repeat the process. So they, they were iteratively going through the, the backlog of work, um, implementing here a feedback loop. And at any point, they could also offer to change the process itself to debate or to how to debate. Uh, which reminds me quite of some product in most product team I've seen are trying to run Scrum or Lean Startup at different scales, right? But we have this idea of cycling through a kind of a roadmap or a kind of a, a backlog of work. So now when I look at that, I can, I'm considering, what was the problem of the Athenian? It's like, once you open a debate, you're just like opening a kind of form, you have no idea how long it may take, right? You may be able to say, well, last time we discussed uh, how to organize our work campaign, it lasted only a couple of days, so that should be similar this time. But maybe there is the audience who disagree strongly with the first orator, and then it goes on for weeks. They just have no idea. However, they were very agile in the mindset, I believe. There is that thing we had in Agile many years ago, and I think it's been quite uh, forgotten over the years. But when Agile came out, it was not a silver bullet. The idea was like the promise of agility was, if you give me six months and 12 people, one, what I can promise you is you will get the best you can get out of these six months and those 12 people. The idea was not to make you false promises. And the only commitment was to say, well, we, we just do our best. You know, you get the best you can get. Expect the art of the possible. A quite forgotten agile perspective, I believe. But the Athenians were really good with that. And they even came up with the rhetoric. And the rhetoric was the idea that instead of convincing by using a fake example or assumptions, um, you will actually base your argumentation on factual things. They were actually very empirical in that approach. I believe it's almost like they were trying to manage their flow in the, in the way we, we were commanding it. Use actual data, look at what's happening on the ground to forecast what may come and to manage your flow accordingly. So how does that look like for the product teams? Instead of saying, let's plan for a full scope by that milestone, you ask them, Let, let's get some things done. Let's see how we go about getting things done, right? After some time, you can see some trends happening for them and we focus uh, onto those trends. Right. So this is often what we can do. This is a very classic burn-up chart. Uh, there are many others. But the idea is like by using empirical data, the forecast we've done there is a little more certain than just the finger in the air we had pre-iteration before. Right. So by then we can start having the right conversation, which is that's more or less how it looks like for now. Now, if you tell me you have something in the green zone you really need, let's maybe consider doing it now, doing it tomorrow or the day after. Let's shuffle our priorities. Right? So visualization, empirical data, empirical forecasting. Use things that are real to try and convince people. Right? No, Atenian still had a very big problem that I believe is still relevant for the product team today. Forecasts are forecasts, and it always turns out to be different. So every time we do our, our trends, we're like, hey, this is what should be in the release for May. We often end up with this. You know, they present that and everybody's like, yeah, that's, that's real life, right? We don't follow the trend. We rally on above it, it can happen, but often like we don't really quite hit the spot. What did the um, Athenians do at the time, right? I believe that it is also the, the root of democracy was all about uh, doing things together. I believe they quite represented well the practice, the lean practice of improving collaboratively and evolving experimentally. So the idea is to say, well, if we see the trend is changing, right? We're just proving ourselves that that's more realistic and that's more like uh, our current pace of work. Maybe they had a work campaign, and uh, maybe we had a production issues that's been quite uh, bugging us for the last couple of weeks, and it impacts the way things go, right? So the idea is to say, well, that's perfectly fine. Let's let's adapt from here. So if we have to review our estimates, and if that's more or less the the new forecast we have, then. Sorry, then what do we want to do? 
about this next week? What's the next thing we want to do? If I tell you that tomorrow we can only fit about that much of work by the release of May, how do you want to adapt our work? All right, so there's the idea of like, you get something done, you visualize the progress, and you purchase what's next, right? The replanning cycle, which is a very important thing for product teams. This is inherent to Scrum, inherent to Lean Startup. The idea is to say, don't try and forecast everything for the next year. Get a bit done, and reassess, and get a bit done and reassess, and do that often. In the scenario I've just shown, it came as a surprise after seven iteration, but what if we had continuously replanned? Then it means that you enact something very important, I believe. All the information you gather, all the data you're using, all the information, radiation, visualization, it's really about what should come next. It's good to have an idea about what's coming in six months, right? To, to get some, um, some palpable idea about that. But what's important is like, okay, what does that mean for tomorrow? What does that mean for today? So here again, I'm gonna invite you to share your thought. That's what I wanted to share about the Athenian. If you're approaching us and someone spot on product, how does that resonate? I'm gonna open the next Mentimeter. You can join us, code is 52489715. All right. What would work for you out of the possible? Expect to get the best that you can get. Right? Don't make fake promises. We'll just do what we can. Second, drive conversation alignment and decision using visualization and empirical data. Again, don't make fake promise. Tell me how it's working for you, how is that it has been working, and what we can learn from what's going on, right? Most importantly, once you have that, review the plan. How often do I see team implementing iterations, but they have a release date by six months, and all of the six months, nothing changed about what's in that release or the date of the release. And that's not, not possible. I don't believe that. I don't believe it can work. You cannot be sure six months before what will be in that thing. So how did you do that? Often we sacrifice a bit out. Um, and use information to inform what should come next. This is the most important thing. What's next, not what's after that. What's with us right now. Okay, a few minutes for you to share here. Then I'm gonna open breakout room, mingle people again. We open breakout room, you should have the same number of people in your room between two and four, depending on how lucky you are. I invite you staying on the same Mentimeter, capture what you discuss. You can input it, you can send us, send us as many ideas as are covered in your breakout. Okay, I'm starting the room now. This time done, join the room. What do you think, Sinke? Do you think you are an Athenian? I think so. Very much. I'm really surprised about those, you know, where they go. Yeah. It seems like um, I was interested to see. Whoops. Use. Yeah, very relevant. That was the very previous one. Yeah, that was the Spartan. Seems for product a little bit more mitigated. I'm looking forward to see what emerged in the, in the conversation. Dense mass of dependencies. Yeah, very relevant to iterate for country. What came out for the Spartan? Make sure that people can finish their tasks. Is critical high risk causing individual to reach down. There's a lot that project can learn from good information. I seem to have promised this presentation. I think that's interesting. You don't have it. The behaviors know. overcome processes is interesting. Yes. So I don't know which way it was said. Was it like behaviors overcome processes is good? You see that in your in your work, or is it something you you'd like to achieve? Like you mean me? No, I don't know. It's like it's been discussed in that 
very without room in the shed thing if I could. I think you can look at it from different um, angles. That's an interesting statement. Well, not much. Yet. Three more minutes. Is the pace okay? I'm trying to. Maybe we are. Yep, we are perfectly on time. Deliberative democracy shit done. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think there is no environment without dependencies. Yeah, that's that's a real real problem, right? Mm, it's reality. It's, mm. it's not a problem, it's just what it is. We've got to deal with them. Although there are some differences that are frustrating and can be resolved in working with non functional teams. Okay, this one is one of my terms. Then front and back end, nobody talks to each other. Designer are another team. So then you are dependent on each other. Putting them together has been just just opening conversation. What's helpful for them? Okay, we've got about one more minute. Um, I think um, the recording is all um, with us, um, Aurelien, so they will see all the slight changes. It's okay. I'm just curious while they are coming back. I'm closing the room now. Hi everyone and welcome back. Yeah. Right. Um share your thoughts, you have Mentimeter, if it's still open, capture what, what's this what's been discussed. We'll come back to that at the end of the conversation. Now we've been waiting for it almost the whole talk, right? We here for the Trojans. Thanks, Athenians. But what if I'm a hybrid team? What if I'm in the middle, which is the reality of many? Now you know how the Trojan War went, right? Paris, take Helen, the wife of the Spartan king, bring her back to Sparta, yes. to Troy. That I know is quite a bit, the king of Sparta, who goes to his brother, who actually has the hand of all Greece at the time, and tell him, I want revenge. What happened after that? Menelas, the brother of the Spartan king, sent the whole of Greece and all the Trojans, because they're hybrid, and I think this is where it's relevant for the for the hybrid team. Because they are in a very messy situation, they got all the problems we covered, right? The opponent army is almost infinite. You have the whole of Greece at your door. The city is encircled, so there is no way you can limit your whip, tackle it slowly, or you know, manage your expedite. It's just going from all um, from all sides in the city. Now you're fighting people from different, from all of Greece, as we said, so you don't know how they fight, you don't know how hard they are to fight. On the on the lot, you have uh, mythical Greek heroes. How do you defeat Ajax? How long does that gonna take? 
I have no idea. It's just, again, we're opening a can of worms. And we can forecast victory, but still remain forecast. There is no way to know it will be victorious if we win this war. Right? So that's the prelude for the Trojan War. This is how it starts. And when I see that, I'm thinking about my teams, and I'm like, hey, I've seen that somewhere. I've seen that team with like a lot in the pipeline. No opportunity to push a late change in priorities to them. Uh, a roadmap that is clearly established, right? And an infinite backlog of work. And so when I come and I see a board that looks like that, and I think it's quite common these days, I just see all those problems. I see being both with all the, the, the worst of the Spartans and the Athenians at the same time, but none of the benefits, right? So we have forecast that we won't meet. We have expedites that's going to disrupt our flow. We have complexity of work we're doing. So it's really hard to say how long it's going to take. And the backlog just never never stops. Well, when the Trojans saw the Greeks uh, arriving, they were actually pretty confident. They said, no worries. We are resilient. We are a resilient city. Our walls are thick, and we are committed to this new queen of ours. We'll fight back. And then they were right, because it actually works. Right? Resilience works for a while. The Agamemnon is embittered leading assault against Troy and being defeated again and again. However, we know, and that's the, the concept of the right? we know it can't last forever. We know that ultimately the pressure stays after a while, sometimes years, it's going to break. Right? So that's a little bit of like reflecting on, on our workplace and thinking like we don't want to reach that state. No, the Greeks were not that patient anyway. They were not, they were in for a few years, but not for a decade. Uh, they had this marvelous idea. And this is also something I see my team, the, the Trojan horse. Right? If the situation is really toxic already, why not make it worse? The Trojan horse. If you don't know the story, the Greeks pretend they leave. The whole army disappear overnight. And they leave behind them a Trojan horse, like a horse made of wood. Um, good thing is that the Trojan actually um, venerate the horses as a big symbol for the city. So when they see that, they say, great, let's let's remove everything that was in progress for us. Let's bring the horse in and party instead of attending our, our deceased and, and injured, instead of cleaning up the city because the work currently is done. You know, there's still a lot of things in the backlog we should be working on. The change priority, pull in the horse. Now, if you know the story, inside the horse, there is an Easter egg. Inside the horse, there are hidden Greeks ready to um, come down at night and open the door. And this is what happened. So the Trojan bring the horse inside the city. At night, the Greeks get out of the horse, open the door to the whole of the Greek army that hadn't left at all. And the city is sacked, burned to the ground and sacked of Troy, like in the movie. Spoiler alert, sorry. Uh, Dan, you told me you haven't seen the movie. I apologize. Um, Troy fell for the horse. And that's why we call Trojan horse all those also viruses and programs. But now, how does that relate to work? I've seen that. I've seen my teams. We have our stakeholders come back to from his very nice uh, holidays in uh, Cuba, in which he had this app he used in his hotel or for the travel. And he's like, that was really good. I really like it. And you see this guy saying, oh, you know, yes, but we have already a set of priorities. There's already this and that we're working on. And she's like, no, no, no. We need this now. Look how beautiful it is, right? So how often do I see that? For my teams, they're the hybrid, they're everything. It's like, no, no, just, just do this one now. But just let's make it expedite. Just let, let's just squeeze it into that sprint, please. But that's all right. Or finally, uh, we'll need it for the release in May, right? I, I hope you don't mind. Right? We put Trojan horses there. No, because of the nature of our work, we know it's never so simple. And these simple tasks, you're going to say, oh, come on, it's just this may break the production tomorrow. You know, so it always comes with like Spartans. They are, there, they are inside, they're hidden in the, in the horses and they take over our roadmap. So first, like production issues, whatever we're doing, no, no, we pause, we have all these issues we need to fix. Quickly take over the whole sprint actually, if not the whole roadmap, right? By, by May, we are actually far behind what we have planned. And all those new changes in priorities uh, actually crushed our strategy. And in the best case scenario, it ended up with people quitting the job and moving on to uh, better pasture. However, there is a lot of things 
uh, more toxic happening there. We know people are burning out. We know people are, uh, may turn into deep depression. Toxic workplace are not a nice uh, for anyone. So the key ideas here, uh, in my parallel with the, the, the Trojan War, is to say that given the ambiguity and complexity of the work we're doing, these new ideas should follow the established prioritization process. Right? It should say, to tell me that this new idea is really important. Let's, okay, let's, let's put it in the pipes. Let's consider it not for this sprint, maybe next sprint, right? If you follow the normal prioritization process and it happens to be important, it will come back. Now, if you think about the Trojans, the Greek inside would have died of hunger and thirst if we had left the horse at the door, taken care of the war issues we have, okay, cleaning up, attending our death and, and injured, right, and then bringing the horse in. Then there is no Spartan inside anymore. Right, so it's important follow the established prioritization process, assess against what's already in the pipe. Now, I have no problem. Let's take in more Trojan horses. But we have to consider that a strategic pivot. But we have to plan and adapt accordingly to what's already in the pipe. If we have a release plan and we shift our strategy, that's perfectly fine. But we can't expect to have both the best of both worlds. Right? Then we have to review what was planned for the release um, or what was planned in the spring. And there's no problem with that. Although it's disruptive, it can be uh, mitigated. Now, my invitation for you is if you feel you are a hybrid team, is to try and move a little bit away from it. Right? On the spectrum, if you feel you are sitting in the middle, to try and slide maybe one step to the right, one step to the left. Try to step one step to the right, one step to the left, uh, toward being more of a product team, a little bit more like the theory implies it. A bit more like service team, fighting for your flow not to be disrupted. Right? And a baby step is enough, it's already a good thing. And that's my invitation through the six practices we've seen today. Now, again, I'm extremely curious. How does that resonate with you? If you can please join me and Menti, this time the code is uh, 57895560. I can scan the QR code. Um, I see the first question is missing here. Uh, the idea that pressure should be um, only to respond to a crisis. Toxic environment, a lot of things going at the same time, a lot of pressure environment. Should be to respond to a crisis. Crisis, it shouldn't be the AU. It shouldn't be just like forever, for years and years and years, we are in a pressure environment. That was the first question. Sorry if you are missing the, the prompt. Uh, second question follow the standard prioritization process when new work emerge. Get back in the pipe, assess it against what's already there. It's more important we trade off. Right? And if we put in new work, we consider it a strategic pivot. Number three. And number four, I think it's possible for me to shift my team context at least a little bit toward the more stable end of the spectrum. Do you think you can do that? Please share with me using the prompt. And I see people feel it's not applicable. I will be really curious in your discussion, in your conversation, and in the next slide for you to capture what makes it hard. And obviously, we're talking with Silke. There is a real life yeah. at work. What makes it hard? So please, I'm starting a breakout room. Five more minutes. I invite you to discuss this last segment. We'll then uh, conclude very briefly and open the floor for questions and deep dive. Okay, I'll see you in five. You should have a prompt on your Zoom window to join one of the breakout rooms. Okay. Um, I'm on my mobile and I just don't have a prompt at the moment. Um, if you try and scroll left or right. Oh, okay. And otherwise you just stay with us and we'll discuss the topic together. Yeah. Um, I might, I don't see the prompt, but I'm also uh, late. I really struggled to find the link. Apologies for that. It's perfectly fine. Did you join mid this segment? Sorry, say that again. Did you join in the middle of this segment or did you? Yes, yes, I did. No, no, I joined in the middle. 
Nice, nice to see you, Sammy. By the way. Um, oh hi. So, don't don't worry. Um, you can also just um hang out with us if you like. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we'll do. Aurelien, I'm actually wondering why you didn't um offer other things like classes of service. Didn't that fit in the core in the in the um? So that's if you remember when I do the expedite, when I have more time, I dive into what level of services you can explore. So when something happened, can I respond to it in the agreed mm -hmm. uh, to the agreed approach? Um, I cover it, but. It goes really fast. So I simplify with just the expedite that I can cover in a minute or less. Mm. Right. So otherwise, class of service, we're opening a big box. But it's in the, in the, in the longer version. Mm. Will be interesting what they come come back with. My, my, my spontaneous thought was they might just not be in a position in real life to shift, you know? Mm -hmm. Just have to handle with with what's coming in. Yeah, absolutely. I see some people who are still on the positive, but some people said, nah. <laughs> I mm. hope they actually, it seems they, there is a bit of lag. They share once they are back. So you can see now for the uh, Athenians, graph was representative. Or the graph represented. It's hard to get people go listen to reason, talking about philosophers. Uh, visualization is good. The long path to change preconceived ways of working is a challenge. Insufficient rational thinking where I am to move to the right end of the spectrum. Interesting. People are sharing some challenges here. I'm really looking forward to open the space in a minute. See what they what they come with. Mm -hmm. How have you been, Sammy? Uh, yeah, good, thank you. Um, I started a It's being a, recorded, a by the way. <laughs> so. yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah, I started a role a couple of months ago, um, okay. and I'm just sort of trying to get to grips with it, find my feet, and um, put some foundations down. Cool. Very nice. How about yourself? Are you which Which side of the world are you? I'm in Wellington. <laughs> oh, you've come okay. back. Okay. Yeah. 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 I do summers. <laughs> uh, checks the summer. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if I can, yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to work out this year. Um, yeah. I see. Yeah, I might have some massive work coming up here on this side, so might ah. only just go for a for a bit. But I'm actually quite enjoying autumn at the moment. It's it feels really quite nice actually. Oh. Yeah, I hear that you've had um, a very hot summer, actually, in Wellington. Too much wind for me, to be honest. I mean, um, I haven't okay. been... That's normal. I usually go into the, say, like, into the water every day, um, and I haven't been this year just because of, you know, the, the wind, wind means there's lots of sand around you, and I don't like that. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got family that live in Wellington, and they said that it's been very, very hot. Mm. Hot, yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm going to close the rooms and people are going to come back. Oh. Okay. Nice story though. Nice to hear. <laughs> the Europeans usually like to hear these kind of things because it feel, gets them a feeling that they are on a holiday early in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely. And as you come back, we're about to open the, the floor to questions and comments. Uh, but please, stay in the mentee, share. The key insights in your conversation, what makes it hard? It's been a bit challenged here. Um, most important person gets prioritized. Yes, absolutely. And if it's a Trojan horse, then what happens? Yeah, let me just conclude here. Um, I think there is, we try and move away from hybrid team, but we can also try and embrace it, stay where we are because it's hard to change our context sometimes, or try to bring about the change we need. Uh, just try and remember. Remember our two perspectives. System can be improved. And if you have to fix some, something, it's not the people, it's the system, it's your environment. This is where the opportunity is. 
So even in a critical environment, the whole of Greece was invaded by the biggest army ever seen to mankind at the time. The Spartan, they found a way by changing the system. Expect the art of the possible, and that's really what's important. We're asking you to commit to 24-7 work for the next six months on a realistic timeline. What we should be expecting is just that we'll do the best we can and deliver about what was possible, given mankind's current situation facing adversity and, and software engineering, and that is very complex. In this context, we'll get the best we can. Leverage good practice. Today we covered some of the Kanban practices, for instance. There are many more, uh, many good practice you can try and, and derivate from in your own context. Limit work in progress, manage the flow, right? make the policies explicit, improve collaboratively, evolve experimentally. And finally, key rules for me and for my team. Either dealing with an overwhelming amount of critical requests, do not let your flow be disrupted because then you fall into chaos and it's only downhill from there, right? And secondly, for the product team, maybe all your data and information radiation should not be informing a single decision what should come next. This is my two cents for you today. Thank you very much. If you like the slides, you can scan this QR code. You can find me on LinkedIn. And you can contact me if you have any questions. And I think we have time now for about 15 minutes, if I'm not wrong, Silke, for a QA and a and maybe some suggestions. Thank you very much, Aurelien. And in terms of timing, we are quite flexible. I always schedule it for two hours, so there is a bit of a buffer. Um, and it's a bit like an unconference. It ends when it ends. <laughs> so, um, yeah, all questions, welcome. How did you um, like it? Are there any questions, any input, any challenges, any thought-provoking um, questions you have? Do you have any particular ideas on how to move from that little hybrid to uh, one or the other of the sides? Yep, I can't see who is, who is asking. Oh, I'm sorry. Abby, Abby is asking. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's, yeah. No problem. Not, it's Zoom, not, not showing you. Uh, Ravi, sure. Great question. So when I when I invite people to try and slide uh, slide a little bit more toward this context, the idea is to say if you're hybrid, then you've got the worst of both worlds. Right? As I uh, as I was sharing, if your if your roadmap looks like that, you're having all the all the issues, all the struggles. So the idea, even in the context I shared today, taking good practices, and there are many. So I shared I shared four with you today, but you may have many more to be inspired from. But it's to say, well, can we try and handle our expedite a little better, right? Silke was talking about class of services while you were in the breakout room. Absolutely, try to identify when you come with me with this kind of request, how long do I really have to answer it? But maybe that's your opportunity here. And trying to influence that is going to start you sliding a little more toward the Spartans. But maybe you tell me, well, the backlog is infinite. Okay, then can we try and reduce our our, our risk? Maybe not limit it, maybe it's too early for you to limit it, but reducing it. If I take the practice that I shared with you today, that's a step towards sliding to being more of a Spartan. Similarly, complexity, can we embrace it? Can we try and respond to change? If all forecasts are not right, can we just talk, collaborate together to try and respond to that rather than trying to find who to blame? So the practice I shared are technically a way for you to start sliding, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just this this will take a while. Yes, and this is why I'm I'm telling you, you start sliding. It's baby step. Try and influence it, but you won't become a service team or a Spartan or an anti over overnight. And the idea right. is even I don't believe anybody is either or ever in the extremes of the spectrum. You're always somewhere in the middle. There is just good things, good inspiration to take. If you feel you are more doing service or BAU. Maybe then all the Kanban, all the lean literature can inspire you to try things at work. The idea is like we are continuously improving. So what can we try tomorrow we need to uncover better ways to work today? Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Robin. Any more questions? <laughs>
Aurelian, thank you for this. Um, I'm struggling to hear everything you say clearly, so you may have answered this question already. Uh, but my question is, in a context where everybody is already at capacity, um, doing kind of BAU and maybe a little firefighting, is it still worth trying to hold out for some project teams that are, you know, maybe like a tiny bit protected to start to eat away at change? I'm not sure I understand your question here. So just hypothetically, the, the, there's a world where um, with hybrid teams, where the, um, the teams have this fantasy that they can actually perform some project, you know, some change. But in reality, they're completely consumed. The capacity is completely consumed by, it's not quite as bad as this, but like responding to incidents and a little bit of maintenance. And the project stuff just, just keeps getting deferred, deferred, deferred. It expedites all that happens. Yep. Um, is it still I... worth trying to pull these two poles apart, uh, this sort of hybrid thing apart? How do, how do you make that, get traction with that? Sure. So you're trying to get a little more stability. The ground you're describing here is like, we had max capacity, so the only solution we found is not to throw expedite and to make everything purity zero, right? And everything it becomes very important. So you start losing quality, losing ground, and the house set on fire. And from what I understood, you are you're having similar similar to this to say, yep, we are taking on the project. We believe that's what we can deliver, and then the performance starts dropping, and this is where people start responding with more pressure losing the clarity and prioritization and starting throwing things at people. Is that is that right? Mm -hmm. So I think the idea I was presenting today, there is many approach to that depending on your context, obviously. But if I want to tie it back to the talk, the idea is like we are in this situation all together. And when we say improve collaboratively and evolve experimentally, it's not only at the team scale, it's at the whole organization level. So when I face this kind of graph with my teams, it's not only for the team to be blamed and to find a way for them to fix it. It's also something to open a conversation with the stakeholders, with the customers, to say, this is a situation today. Not because we try and trick you, not because we are bad, or not because we have anyone to blame, but because that's the way it is, given we are working in a complex, emerging, uh, volatile, uncertain environment, right? So given this situation, if the release in, is in next iteration, and we could only include one thing, what would it be? When you start this conversation, so we can step back, step away from everything for it to zero, try and step back saying, let's get things, uh, uh, let, let's get things under control again. Does that make sense to you? Hey, Dan, actually, yeah. when you were in breakout rooms, um, um, watch the recording, I actually asked um, if, um, why Aurelien hasn't come up with, for example, classes of service. Um, and because I, I asked, um, do you think it's feasible or realistic for teams to actually have a choice um, in that spectrum? Um, so I think classes of service would be a very elegant Kanban way of how you can start to also work with. Um, but spoiler alert, um, safe doesn't really explain them well. So maybe... Um, <laughs> If you like to understand classes of service, get in touch with me. <laughs> or for the Aussies and to um, get in touch with that. But that is a really elegant um, way. And um, Aurelien said in his um, advanced version of the talk, he actually includes the classes of service as well. Because I think we realize that teams often don't actually have a realistic choice as of where they are and where they can move, right? Yes, indeed. I cover this in the in this this segment of the talk where I was talking about the expedite. You know, the solution is really to classify mm -hmm. into service, but there is a kind of a subset here. A lot to dive into, and not only in Kanban, there are so many things in the market. So many good practices we can learn from. The idea is like, what can you try tomorrow? Try and find one thing to try, see if it works for you. 
and then get yourself out of this uh, pressured environment you are in. Mm. Did that help? The, By the way, I, I know Dan really well. We worked with each other. So um, did that help? Um, it's shivering into view. Okay. And yeah, just just by the way, I have no tight coupling with safe. <laughs> That's okay. That was more like I I think that was my um I read something today and <laughs> I was like, ooh. <laughs> so I, I I felt like I need to do a bit of a spoiler alert here. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. Cool. Any more questions? Was there anything you wanted to say, Dan? Like the other Dan? Australian Dan? No, nah, I'm, I'm all good. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Cool. Yeah. Or thoughts or just something you want to share? Doesn't seem like it. So what I'll do, I share, uh, I stop the recording here and then we will actually hang in. Um, so anything you didn't dare to ask or say, you can um, share then. <laughs> Thanks everybody um, who is watching the recording um, and see you next time.